Hello everyone, welcome to our PMP exam question and answer solving session for April. So just like the previous months, in today's session, we'll be solving some medium to high difficulty level PMP exam questions very similar to your actual exam. Also, if you have not watched the previous Q&A sessions, I would highly encourage you to check them out, okay? I'm sure that you will find them immensely helpful for your PMP exam preparation. I will link the entire playlist in the description section of this video. Now, if you are preparing for the PMP exam, you can use today's class to assess how well you are prepared for the exam, okay? So, out of the five questions that we'll be solving today, the target would be to get all the five out of five questions correct, right? However, the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct to consider yourself fairly well prepared for the PMP exam. Now, anything less than that, you might need a bit more preparation, okay? Also, before we get the discussion started, guys, I would like to introduce you to my YouTube membership. OK, so you can join my monthly memberships using the join button on the screen or on your mobile app, whichever YouTube version you are using. So I have kept the prices extremely, extremely affordable. So there is a basic tier and there is an advanced tier of membership. And within this membership community, I give daily tips about PMP exam preparation and processes. OK, so often over the YouTube videos, it is not possible for me to go through each and every detail and each and every tip and strategy that I'm willing to share with all of you guys. So what I have done within this membership communities is I have collated all those information in form of daily posts, which you will receive if you are a part of this basic membership. And if you think that doing some one to one live stream sessions with me will be helpful for you in terms of getting your preparation up to speed, or strategize with respect to whatever prep strategy you are using. With the advanced membership tier, you get access to my live doubt clearing sessions, which I hold fortnightly. So you can join those if you think that is something that you are looking for. So as I mentioned, the prices are extremely affordable. You can try it out for a few months. And if you don't like it, you can cancel anytime. OK, that's the beauty of a subscription based model, right? So with that, let's start with question number one for this month's session. So I'll pause here. Please read the question, OK? Read the options and try to answer it before we take this together. You can pause the video here if you wish to. OK, so let's start. During an impediment review meeting, the Agile team has highlighted some significant blockers, OK? Now, if you are a PMP aspirant, you should be knowing that what is an impediment review meeting, OK? If not, please go back and study your Agile topics in a much more detailed manner because impediment review is one of the key items of Agile way of project management. And in these kind of impediment reviews, you review the blockers or let's say challenges or the problems which your Agile team is facing in a particular sprint, OK? Right, so let's carry on. Upon analysis, it is revealed that the blockers are linked to the regulatory and legislation changes which have been made applicable recently. OK, so this is a project governance issue. And since these changes have been taken into effect very recently, your team is facing some significant blockers which you need to manage. This will introduce potential delays. OK, what should be the next step for you as the project manager? Right, so let's go to the options one by one. Option A. Plan to re-estimate the story points and update the burn up charts accordingly. OK, so a lot of technical jargon here, guys. OK, story points, burn up charts, etc. So that is why it is very important for you that whenever you are preparing for your PMP, please focus a lot with respect to these terms and terminologies, these concepts of agile. OK, so you can watch my free YouTube videos as well because I've made a lot of videos previously on this topic on the YouTube channel. OK, right. So planning to re-estimate the story points and updating the burn up charts. OK, now if you re-estimate a story points and obviously you will try to re-estimate it now with respect to the delays that you are potentially facing. So for example, in a story point, if you initially plan that you will take like three weeks to deliver that story point. Now you re-estimate and you think that this needs to be delivered in like four or four and a half or five weeks, right? And you update your burn up charts accordingly. Now in this video, I will not explain what the burn up charts are. It is a homework for you to go back to your agile practice guide and study the topic of burn up charts. OK, now in this scenario, guys, look what's happening that there is a regulatory and legislation change that has come into effect in your project and potentially you are facing some delays. OK, now if you just uh, estimate the story point, 
points and say that okay the delay is approximately one one and a half weeks now and the story point which initially was planned to be done in three weeks now will take like five weeks and you update the burn up charts accordingly what good will it do right so that can be done by your project support officer so how is it taking you one step forward towards solving a problem right it is not it is a very reactive process just by updating estimates updating burn up charts you can say to your customer that look boss the legislations have come and initially since you were planning to deliver it in three weeks now i will take it like five weeks to deliver it okay now is that a prudent approach as a project manager obviously not right because you are not coming to the table with a solution oriented mindset okay so that is why option a is incorrect let's look at option b work with the subject matter experts to streamline the processes and enable team capability okay now prima facie this may seem to you as a very generic option right working with subject matter experts streamline processes team capability okay so let's hold this option for now okay right let's look at option c plan to the next iteration to build capability of team on the regulatory and legislation changes okay you can hold this option you can say that right the next iteration whatever i have planned that will all go down the drain and now i will plan an iteration where i will take my team through the details of this regulatory and legislation changes will it take you any step forward towards developing the product which we are already developing probably not right but okay let's hold this option for now and let's look at option d demonstrate servant leadership okay nice thing and hold the product owner accountable to remove the blockers okay now that is also incorrect guys of course this part is correct that demonstrating servant leadership of course as a project manager you need to demonstrate servant leadership in your projects but demonstration doesn't mean that if you are facing some impediments or blockers which your team has highlighted you just pass the buck to your product owner and hold him or her accountable to remove the blockers okay it should be done as a combined effort with respect to you and with respect to your product owner taking the team with you as you go through the problem solving process okay just passing the buck to the product owner is not a servant leadership behavior okay so option d is incorrect because demonstrating servant leadership is fine but the way the option is asking you to demonstrate servant leadership is incorrect okay so option d is not the correct answer okay now if you come back to option c planning the next iteration to build capability on the regulatory and legislation changes is not something that is taking you one step closer towards solving the problem right you are totally scrapping your sprint cycle you are totally scrapping your product development map or product development journey and now you are saying that since the legislations and the regulations have come i will now spend an entire sprint taking my team through the capability building of this legislation and the regulatory changes that is incorrect guys okay now closely look at option b guys it is a very generic option but if you start to read and understand and analyze that option it will make more sense for you okay work with subject matter experts so it is saying that you need not to do anything yourself in terms of understanding and deciphering what the regulation and legislations mean to you because because you as the project manager or the product owner you are not the subject matter expert so you hire a legal team or you reach out to your legal or your solicitor department where you will get your subject matter experts who can tell you that okay what does these new legislations and regulations mean for your business okay so that's where subject matter experts come from to streamline the processes and then basis that you can take the call that okay do i need to redo some of my sprint cycles do i need to redo my backlog iteration do i need to do a backlog refinement etc etc and you build your team capability based on the action okay so whatever will be coming from the recommendations of your subject matter expert okay and that is the most sensible thing to do in this scenario that you work with subject matter experts to streamline the processes within your team and enable your team capability to understand those crux of the regulations and the legislations that has come and the understanding will be more in terms of understanding that how it will affect your project moving on okay and that is where your team needs to come and help you to get this sorted so the correct answer to this question is option b now you see guys as a part of this whole exercise how i went through option by option and tried to eliminate every option on solid grounds okay now these kind of tips and strategies i can teach you as part of these monthly q and a sessions but there are a lot more to learn as well okay apart from what i am teaching now so what i have done is i have compiled all those tips and strategies and all those nuances of problem solving in my monthly membership post so if you wish and if you are happy with my teaching style i would encourage you to go and check out my monthly membership packages on youtube as well
So coming back to this question, the correct answer to this question is option B. And now let's move on to question number two. Right. So question number two, guys, please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. You can pause the video here as well if you wish to. Right. So let's get started. A project manager is currently being onboarded within a global team located across different regions. OK, the project is on a tight deadline and a tight budget during the planning stage. The sponsor wants the project manager to define the process that will avoid scope creep and deliver the best in class product. OK, so the project is in the planning stage, right? And the sponsor is asking you as the project manager to define some processes or a process that will avoid scope creep. OK, so I hope you are aware what is a scope creep. So basically scope creep means that you keep on adding some scope items into your project knowingly or unknowingly as the project progresses. OK, so overall later if you have too much of scope creep in your project which is not managed properly, the entire project can become a failure because multiple scope creeps can actually increase your costs increase your schedule have problems with product quality etc etc okay so please go back and study the definition of scope creep from your pmb okay seventh edition okay and deliver the best in class product so your sponsor not only wants you to avoid scope creep but also he or she wants you to deliver the best in class product which is product quality right how should the project manager meet the sponsors requirements right so let's go to the options one by one this should be comparatively easy to solve guys i hope many of you have got this correct so let's look at the options option a plan to develop a robust stakeholder engagement plan incorrect right so how is stakeholder engagement plan related to scope creep and product quality so there may be a secondary or a tertiary relationship but primarily it is not a direct relationship between a stakeholder engagement plan and scope creep and best in class product okay so option a is incorrect let's look at option b plan to develop a robust communications management plan okay let's hold this option for now you might say that ray if i do a good communication with my stakeholders in and out throughout the project i will avoid scope creep and i will deliver western class product okay i take your argument so let's park this option for now and let's come back to this in some time Let's look at option C plan to develop a robust change management approach. OK, so this is similar to a change management plan. Now this change management plan has a very strong relationship to scope creep and best in class product, which is product quality, right? Because that is the essence of change management that if you do change management properly in your project, you will avoid scope creep and you will be able to deliver the product which the customer has asked for. OK. So option C seems like a very, very strong option. However, let's look at option D as well. Plan to develop a robust change log monitoring. OK, now this also can be an option that you do a robust monitoring of change log and try to identify that. OK, if there are some changes coming, how I am monitoring it, how I am taking the life cycle of an entire change from proposal to accept or reject. OK, and then implement if it is accepted. So option D can also be an option, right? So after the first iteration, we have eliminated option A, but we are left with option B, C and D. OK, now if you go to option B again, plan to develop a robust communications management plan. That is incorrect, right? Because as I was discussing, communications management plan can be linked to scope creep and product quality, but you need to think as part of a PMP exam candidate that whether this relation is a primary relation or a secondary or a tertiary relation. OK, so probably in this scenario, we are talking about a secondary or a tertiary relationship between communications management plan and scope creep and best in class product okay so that is why this option is definitely incorrect let's look at option c plan to develop a robust change management approach and if you see option d as well there is a close tie between a change management approach and a change log monitoring now how will you know that what is the correct answer OK, so for that you need to go back to the question stem and look at this phrase, which is the planning stage. Now you tell me guys, when is a change log monitoring done? OK, so it is not talking about establishing a change log. It is talking about monitoring, right? So it is done in the monitoring and controlling phase of a project, not at the planning stage, right? So that is why option D falls apart and the correct answer to this question is option C, which is to 
plan and develop a robust change management approach. And the reason why this is correct is if you do a good change management plan, if you develop a good change management approach during the planning stage of a project, it will give you tools and resources or the authority to avoid scope creep later during the project, which can come through multiple change requests and deliver the best in class product, which your customer is asking for, right? So the correct answer to this question is option C. Option D is incorrect because change log monitoring is done in the monitoring and controlling phase of the project and not in the planning stage of a project. If you are liking the video, guys, please press the like button. Your support goes a long way to help this channel grow. Also, your likes and comments help me to understand that you value such educational content and motivates me to prepare more such videos like these to help you with your PMP exam. And now let's move on to question number three. Right. So question number three, guys, please pause the video and try to answer it before we take this up together. Great. So let's get started. The project manager within an agile team is working with an exceptionally talented group of developers. OK, this group has won multiple accolades within the company previously for their technical mastery. Right. So accolade means awards and recognition. However, the team output within the Agile team has fallen drastically as compared to their benchmark, right? So the project manager has got a Agile team, okay? And within the Agile team, there are a set of developers, okay, who are really good with what they do. And there has been a lot of recognition which they have received previously within the company and they have a lot of goodwill however the problem is as part of this project which probably let's say you are leading as a project manager you are not getting the required output which you planned from this set of exceptionally talented developers okay which was their benchmark what actions could the project manager take to improve the situation and this is a multi select question guys and in these kind of multi select questions pmi will tell you how many options you need to choose so you need to select both the options in this question to get your answer correct and get the full marks awarded for this question so mind that if you select only one correct option and one incorrect option it will be marked as an incorrect response okay so you need to select both the correct options right so there are five options which are given to you so let's analyze those five options one by one Option A, plan adjustments to story point estimates. Okay, will that really help to improve the situation? Because your team of talented developers, they are not working for whatever reason and they are not able to deliver their output and you adjust the story point estimates. So what good will it do? Will it improve the situation? Probably not. So even if you are adjusting it in a pessimistic manner, so for example, you can say that, look, guys, if you are not working and you are not able to deliver this story point in three weeks, I will give you like four weeks to deliver. So please deliver it. And there is a one week of delay that I'll book in the project. That is not also a prudent approach, right? And of course, I'm not even talking about reducing the entire timeline. So you can't go to a non-performing team who is already struggling and say that, look, initially you were getting three weeks to deliver this uh, story point and now I give you two weeks, right? So that doesn't make any sense, okay? So story point adjustment will not work here and it will definitely not work to improve the situation. That is incorrect. Let's look at option B. Plan to integrate more t shepherd professionals within the team, right? Again, this is a classic example of why it is important for you to understand the theory of agile terms and agile concepts. Okay, so I have done multiple videos on my YouTube channel previously where I have discussed a detail between T shepherd professionals and I shepherd professionals, right? So you need to know these concepts as clear as daylight. Okay, so there should not be any confusion when you are writing the PMP exam that you do not understand the basic difference of a T shepherd professional and a I shepherd professional, right? So I would encourage you to watch those videos but just as a sake of this video i will give you a one-liner definition of what is a t-shaped professional and what is i shaped professional right so a t-shaped professional is a person who has a broad exposure so if i draw a t here so a t-shaped professional has a broad exposure which is this way and this way across the let's say management level 
also has a good or a decent level of exposure in a specific topic or a specific skill right so that is a t-shaped individual who has a broad understanding of how a business works which is a horizontal understanding and a vertical understanding in one of the domains okay so if you are a project manager you need to understand management and of course you can be a subject matter expert of level one or level two in legislations or regulations let's say okay so you are a t-shaped individual what is i-shaped individual Individual, they are the people who are subject matter experts and who have a very high technical mastery in a discipline, but they have zero management level understanding. Okay, so that is a I shepherd individual. Now it is important for you to understand, guys, for a good agile team, you need a good balance of T shepherd individuals and I shepherd individuals as well. Okay, so if you have uh, all managers in an agile team, then it will also be a problem. And if you have all like subject matter expert in an agile team, then it is also a problematic scenario for you so you should have a good mix so that is the basic difference between a t-shaped and a I shaped professional right now if you go back to this question how would you classify this talented group of developers it would be definitely that these are I shepherd individuals right they are definitely not t shepherd individuals because they are talented they have a big technical mastery but in the question stem, nothing is getting discussed about their management level understanding or a broad level understanding, right? Which is required for a T shaped individual. So definitely they are I shaped individuals. Now, if I come back to option B, now it is starting to make more sense, right? So that, that the option is telling you that you need to integrate more T shaped professionals within the team, right? So that looks like a good option because I already have a very high level of I shepherd mastery within my team. So what I need within my team is a level of T shaped mastery who are able to give a broader outlook and get a decent broader understanding of the overall business as part of the project. Okay. So that looks like a decent option to me. And that is for the same reason option C is incorrect because it is talking about recruiting or integrating more I shepherd individuals where you are already facing trouble with these I shepherd individuals within your team. So definitely option C is incorrect. Let's look at option D. Plan a spike within the developers on a complex story point. Now, the question is, if your team is not performing and they are demotivated, okay, and your, uh, let's say, um, performance is falling drastically as part of the project would you do a spike with such kind of a team probably not right because if you do a spike which is a very focused brainstorming session on a particular story point again an important term of agile which is spike so if you are not clear about that please go back and do your homework however i am assuming that you know the basics of spike and if you know that it will be very easy for you to understand that when you do a spike it is difficult to manage a spike with a team who is uh, demotivated and with a team where there is zero t shaped individuals within the team right otherwise it will be a debate of technical masters who has zero understanding of the business they are side load within their own domain which is the domain of developers as we are talking here and that spike will not generate any solution which you are looking for okay so that is the reason you should not do a spike with only i shepherd individuals okay at least you should be present as a project manager within that spike as a t shepherd individual who can take the feedbacks and inputs from the technical masters and then put it in a broader business context so that is why option d is also incorrect let's look at option e plan for cross-functional skill development workshops right that is a very nice option right because what you are saying is look i know that i have a lot of i shepherd members within my team they are struggling okay because they don't have t shepherd mastery or at least the basic level of t shepherd skills which is broader management skills so i will arrange a cross-functional skill development where at least they will understand that okay even if they're technical masters on development how does testing work how does financing work how does scheduling work how does the entire supply chain of a project delivery work etc etc and things like that okay so i will add those cross-functional skills within these i shaped individuals so that at least i'm able to give them a bit of t shaped knowledge as well okay so option e seems like a good option and of course we have already taken option b within our or remit because it is definitely the correct option right so option a c and d are incorrect and the correct answer to this question is option b and option e okay 
Now, I hope you like the analysis, guys. And of course, as I was saying very initially, that it is difficult for me to teach you everything over a YouTube video because unnecessarily the video will become very long. So I discuss these kind of nuances over my member community as well. So if you wish, you can check out the subscription packages as well. Otherwise, please continue to practice with me via this Q&A monthly sessions, which I will prepare every month for all my subscribers on YouTube, irrespective of the membership levels. If you are finding this practice session helpful, guys, Make sure you subscribe to my channel PMP with Ray for more such videos for your PMP exam preparation. Okay, subscribing to this channel doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps with extending the reach of this channel to other PMP aspirants like you. And now let's move on to question number four. Right. So let's get started. A project manager is currently being onboarded within a global team located across different regions. It has been noticed that the team often faces conflicts on funding priorities for the project okay so the problem is uh, with respect to the funding of the project if one team is saying that okay they need this much amount to do this bit of work the another team comes and says that okay they will need the fund because their work is more important and they have a higher authority over the funding requirements okay so these kind of conflicts keep on arising within your project now such conflicts can arrive with funding issues such conflicts can also arise with scheduling issues can arise with communications can arise with let's say scope definition etc etc okay so the main crux here is the conflict that's happening within your team which is a global team located across different regions the project manager arranges a fishbowl window right interesting another topic of agile which you need to be aware of again go back to my previous monthly q a sessions please watch those videos and i have discussed topics like fishbowl window over my previous videos okay so i'm not going to repeat those concepts here so the project manager arranges a fishbowl window to resolve the conflict which conflict management strategy is being used here so smooth or accommodate force or direct collaborate and reconcile avoid or transfer okay right so at least you need to have the basic understanding of fishbowl window to solve this question if you know that the question can be solved in less than 30 seconds right so what is a fishbowl window guys again please go back watch the previous videos if not please go back to your agile practice guide and study the topic of fishbowl window basically fishbowl window is a long-lived video conferencing link which you need to keep as part of your uh, hybrid or agile team where few of the subject matter experts discuss a particular topic or discuss a particular let's say problem which they are willing to solve and there are observers in and around that area so if i try to draw it for you so let's say this is one of your subject matter experts this is another of your subject matter expert and this is a third subject matter expert they are in a long-lived video conferencing link and i am saying video conferencing because you are a agile or a hybrid team you have members located across different regions so there is sort of a brainstorming session that's happening with these three people who are subject matter experts and you have your other uh, team members watching those discussions and participating in it in a planned fashion okay so these are your other team members so basically this looks like a bowl here where these are fishes and you are an observer of this fishes okay so that's how the name comes as a fishbowl window okay so that is the crux or the basic gist of fishbowl window i would encourage you to go back to your agile practice guide and read the details of a fishbowl window so basically if you know that guys you can straight away see that this is a very collaborative and a nice approach towards problem solving that you have your subject matter experts discussing on a particular problem and you have your observers which are your team members who can pitch in if need be into that discussion and the whole thing happens over a video conferencing or a live link okay so that is the entire intent of having a fishbowl window and it is a great tool of problem solving or conflict resolution and that is why the correct answer to this question is option c which is collaborate or reconcile smoothing or accommodate is something where both the parties sacrifice and it is a lose-lose situation right you lose i lose that is smoothing Force or direct is a win-lose situation where one party wins and other party loses. That's a force or direct situation. You would potentially try to avoid that. Collaborate or reconciliation is a sort of a win-win situation. And of course, fishbowl window is a tool which can definitely be used to deliver a conflict resolution which follows these kind of a collaborative or reconciling approach because what these three people within the fishbowl window are trying to do is they are trying to arrive at a common solution where the team members are also aligned because they're watching this entire show right 
and that is why fishbowl window drives a lot of reconciliations within the agile team as well okay a void or transfer is something which uh, basically you avoid a risk completely or you transfer a risk via something called as an insurance okay you buy an insurance or you get into a contract with your supplier and things like that okay so that are discussions for another video however the correct answer to this question is option c because fishbowl window is a tool which you use to resolve conflicts within your agile team and that tool follows a collaborative and reconciling approach so i hope that is clear to you now I hope you are finding this exercise helpful, right? Remember, the target is to get all the 5 out of 5 questions correct, okay? However, the minimum expectation is to get at least 4 out of the 5 questions correct. So here comes the 5th and the final question. Right, so question number 5 guys, the drill will remain the same. Please read the question and try to answer it before we take this up together. Good, so let's get started. A project manager has implemented an approved risk response plan. Very important, right? Approved risk response plan. However, six months later, it was identified that the company received a legal notice of $30,000 because of a non-compliance caused due to the implemented risk response plan. Okay, so the situation is not looking good because the project manager got an approved risk response plan, which is approved by, let's say, the sponsor or the project board. But after six months, there is a fine which has been imposed on the company because of a non-compliance which came with this implementation of the risk response plan. Okay, that's a bad situation. How can the project manager avoid this challenge for future projects? So option A, update the risk register. Option B, update the lessons learned register. Option C, update the assumptions log. And option D, update the risk management plan. Okay, so which is the correct answer, guys? Now, to answer this question correctly, you need to be very, very careful in terms of developing the skill of reading the question word by word, okay? And when I say word by word, I literally mean word by word, guys, okay? Because if you do that, that, this question can be answered in less than 30 seconds okay take my word for it because the answer to this question lies in this phrase future projects okay now if you are doing something which is allowing you to correct a mistake not for this project but for your future projects what you are doing you are essentially doing a lessons learned right because you are learning a lesson from one mistake and applying it for your future projects so with that logic, you can straight away say that the correct answer to this question is option B, which is to update the lessons learned register. Now, had the question said that how can the project manager avoid this challenge for uh, this project or let's say how can the project manager correct the situation that has occurred for this project, the answer would have been different, guys, okay? It could have been updating the risk register, probably updating the assumptions log, probably updating the risk management plan, okay? It might have been okay. However, since this question stem is asking you that what you can do as a project manager to avoid this, not for this project, but your future projects. And that is why reading every question word by word makes a lot of difference when you are like struggling between close answer choices. It becomes imperative that if you are doing something which is linked to future projects, you update the lessons learned register. Okay, not the risk register, nor the assumptions log, or not the risk management plan, because those are linked to your current project and not any future project which you may or may not be doing as part of the project manager someone else might be doing that project but at the initiation stage of a project the project manager needs to refer to the lessons learned of similar previous projects and that is why importance of documenting this learning as part of the lessons learned register will be coming as part of the solution for this scenario so the correct answer to this question is option b option a c and d are incorrect because those relate to the current project and not any future project right so that's the end of the quiz guys. Let me know in the comment section below how much you were able to score. Okay. I'd be very interested to know that. Also, if you have scored less, don't get demotivated. Okay. You just need a bit more practice and a thorough analysis of your mistakes so that you get to know about your knowledge gaps. Now to help you practice more and eventually get better. I am linking here the entire playlist of our monthly practice sessions for the PMP exam questions and answers. Please check if you have missed any of the monthly sessions and make sure you practice with me in those sessions as well. I'll see you there.